Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So Wrath of Kahneman posted this, the flare snapshot occurred on December 20th, 2020, and the airdrop is scheduled for the end of June, give or take a few weeks here or there. Uh, I mean, right now we are at the end of June. It is June 28th, today, 2021. Uh, and we still haven't received our FLR Spark tokens. But here's the other thing. The Flare Finance snapshot occurs 30 days after Flare is live. And Flare Finance airdrop will occur 7 to 10 days after this. And I know uh, for a lot of people this might sound a bit confusing. Uh, because there is Flare and there is Flare Finance. And uh, I mean there's a lot going on right now. The FLR distribution will start when Flare Network goes live. This uh, a tweet tweeted out by Flare Networks back in April. The team is working to make this happen safely as soon as possible. It is dependent on finishing security testing. We expect this at the end of June, give or take a few weeks. And so uh, Wrath of Kahneman uh, giving us some updates here. And uh, no, it wasn't December 20th. It was indeed December 12th, uh, if you guys remember correctly. A lot of people really getting excited for this. He also posted this tweet here with an infographic uh, just describing what the difference is between Flare and Flare Finance. And so if you are confused about the difference between Flare and Flare Finance, here's a brief infographic comparing the difference differences and so just a quick comparison here. I will link this in the description of the video if you guys are interested. Flare versus Flare Finance. Uh, so the Flare Network is a smart contract platform, whereas Flare Finance is a decentralized finance DeFi platform. Uh, just going to go over the basic points. Assets on the Flare Network are called F assets. Assets on Flare Finance are called Y assets. Supported F assets on the Flare Network include XRP, XLM, Doge, and LTC. Uh, and then we've got supported Y assets, Algo, ADA, SHIB, CUSD. Uh, Sanshu, Tel, Cell, BNB, Cake, XDC, PAC, Gala, CSC, Flare Finance also supports F assets, including XRP, LTC, XLM, Doge, and FLR. Uh, and then we got the airdrop, of course, Snapshot uh, did occur on December 12, 2020, and distribution of FLR is set for the end of June, give or take a few weeks, in proportion to holdings at the Snapshot. Initially, 15% will be distributed. Uh, and for the airdrop with regards to uh, Flare Finance, Snapshot of FLR holdings, Holdings will occur 30 days after the Flare Network launches. Distribution of DFLR will occur 7 to 10 days later in proportion to that snapshot. DFLR will then need to be exchanged for YFLR. So a lot of terms here, a lot of different coins being airdropped. I will link this in the description if you guys are interested in that. It is coming around the corner. Wanted to also bring you guys this from Michael at Val 5 Links. P Network recently announced that they are partnering with Algorand and POS, or rather proof of stake blockchain focused on merging traditional and decentralized finance. So this is a new partnership with Algorand and P Network. And uh, for those of you guys who do not know, I recently just got into Algorand, so I am staking some of that. So I decided on this channel I will uh, likely be talking about Algorand a little bit more. Kind of like, uh, you know, talking about VeChain. I do hold VeChain. I do want to uh, start kind of expanding and uh, discussing some more cryptocurrencies that I hold personally. So Algorand and P Network partner to build cross-chain connections. Brand new partnership here. P Network recently announced that they are partnering with Algorand, the proof of stake blockchain focused on merging traditional and decentralized finance. P Network, known for its cross chain system helping NFTs and assets to move between blockchain networks, the partnership will see the ventures cross chain bridges for Algorand. Algorand Gas provided a grant to P Network to create a bridge for the Algorand network to connect with external ecosystems and assets. The crypto sector is constantly trying to build new financial platforms to accommodate unique customer needs. And liquidity is key for a lot of these projects. Assets liquidity is a major factor for the platforms, which is currently extended throughout different blockchain networks. Algorand possesses a standalone network as well, uh, which is difficult to interoperate with external assets and networks. Uh, Algorand will follow the example of 700 plus organizations that have already implemented the technology. Uh, P Networks offers bridges to solve the issue of interconnectivity prevalent throughout the blockchain sector. The bridges provide a safe and solid foundation to help tokens move between network. So more value being derived uh, through this partnership here. Algorand holders should make note. Wanted to thank Michael at Val5Links for posting that. And for those of you guys wondering about Jed's sales, well, Leonidas here on Twitter is updating us on that. For people DMing me asking about a Jed update, it feels like Leonidas is the uh, person, the go-to guy for Jed McCaleb updates and XRP sales. Jed sales have been declining due to a drop in XRP volume. So you have to understand Jed McCaleb sells his XRP in conjunction with the trading volume of XRP on exchanges. And so today he sold 4.8 million XRP, the lowest in seven months. 
Uh, total held in Taco Stand plus Ripple Wallet equals about 1 billion XRP. So uh, at 4.9 million per day, it will take about 215 days to run out. Uh, so this update from Leonidas giving us a snapshot here of Jed's Taco Stand wallet here uh, with some more details with regards to Jed McCaleb's XRP sales. So about 215 days away still. And if you guys aren't following Leonidas here on Twitter, uh, I do suggest you do. He does post a lot of great information with regards to uh, a lot of things XRP related and he does have the XRP Arcade, a great website, uh, great resource there. If you guys are interested, uh, if you do hold XRP, might not know who he is. Uh, this one guys from T-Hole Bed XRP. An article here with regards to Bank of America and how they're okaying crypto approach in developing countries. So cryptocurrencies are a financial means used outside the field of regular money systems. As we know, Bitcoin developed to expand the use of digital transactions, enabling a P2P transaction model. Uh, central banks and governments have recognized the growing demand for digital currencies. Some countries such as Sweden or China are progressing to become cashless. So just giving us a bit of background information about this. But now guys, Bank of America, Yes, Bank of America reported and acknowledged the benefits of digital currencies as an economic stimulator. And uh, for those of you guys who do not know, back last year in April of 2020, they did let the cat out of the bag. Uh, Bank of America officially listed on Ripple's website as a Ripple partner. And so uh, this article was just from back then. XRP underscore Crow was pointing this out to us. We are partnering with fintechs like Ripple or Swift. Uh, and down here, just a screen grab an infographic with the Bank of America logo and the Ripple logo that uh, XRP underscore Crow created. I do believe too that they are listed on Ripple's website proper. Bank of America right there. Oh, we just disappeared. Uh, see our customers. Let's see if we can, uh, right, right up here, clicked on that. This coming from ripple.com slash customers. Uh, and so you guys could see that there. It has disappeared now. They only let you look at it for a brief amount of time before uh, it disappears and uh, they want you to join their network. If I refresh that, you guys can see it up here, Bank of America, a Ripple customer. So this is a big deal, guys. The advantages of digital money for a cashless society. So according to a Bank of America study, regulated or independent digital currencies could boost economic growth in developing countries. The head of the emerging market cross-asset strategy and economics highlighted that digital currencies have a lot of potential for including the unbanked population in a global financial system. Well, we know Ripple uh, definitely targeting the unbanked population and uh, Bank of America clearly on board with this. Them being a Ripple partner, they understand the need for this. Furthermore, David Honer emphasized that over 50% of adults in emerging countries are unbanked without access to a bank account. Thus, digital currencies can substantially decrease transaction costs to enable more economic activities to take place. Additionally, Honer discovered that a Emerging economies are increasingly active in trading cryptocurrencies despite not having a bank account. So that is also a very interesting piece of information there. Global consensus concludes cryptocurrencies are a hedge against inflation. A report explains the case of Venezuela where inflation rose by 6,500% in the year 2020. Digital payments such as crypto provide security against inflation. Still, spending crypto is problematic as global acceptance and usage are still short-sighted. El Salvador, as we know, uh, did just recently uh, make Bitcoin legal tender and then it goes on about that. Down here though, guys, banks are not giving up on fees. Uh, but here's the other thing. Ripple, which is currently under investigation by the SEC, created a widely used distributed ledger cross-border payment system. Uh, and then it talks a little bit about their MoneyGram integration, which uh, that partnership has since dissolved. However, the Bank of America report also highlighted digital currencies can reduce cross-border payment costs. The evolution towards a cashless global society adds extra incentives, such as reducing corruption, formalizing the economy, and raising tax revenue. And so, uh, you know, Bank of America being a Ripple partner and them uh, reporting all this in this independent report just tends to make sense. I mean, they are seeing the benefits. They already understand how this new financial system is going to function. And so, uh, you know, by reporting this, I think that this could, uh, you know, speak to their bottom line of wanting to integrate. Maybe they want to open up shop, uh, maybe not under the name Bank of America, but perhaps under a subsidiary where they can now provide services to a lot of these unbanked people utilizing RippleNet technology. So really interesting to see that. Not only that, we have another one here, guys, from T-Hole XRP with regards to cellulance operations. 
Solutions currently extends to 50% of banks on the continent and serves 33 of Africa's largest mobile money operators. So this, guys, also some very, very big news. Cellulent facilitates payments in real time for people in underserved communities. So again, uh, going on with that uh, theme of the unbanked, Cellulent partnered with RippleWorks to increase the reliability and agility of its data architecture. And so uh, just to give you guys a bit more context here, Cellulent is a pan-African digital payment service provider building the critical infrastructure that will drive economic inclusion of rural populations across Africa. Cellulent prompts, collects, settles, and reconciles payments in real time. Cellulent operates in 11 countries, working with 95 banks and more than 40 mobile money platforms that have a combined customer base of more than 140 million people. As Cellulent scales, its top priority was to increase reliability and agility of its data architecture, and it rapidly expands its customer base. Cellulent partnered with RippleWorks to increase the engineering team's ability to design and execute microservice architecture. And uh, just to give you guys some context, here is the RippleWorks team. Uh, not going to name everybody here, but uh, I think it's important to mention, co-founded by Chris Larson down here. So, I mean, you know, it's it's very apparent, Ripple, definitely uh, focusing on the underbanked. Of course, we know that is a huge, huge segment of the global population that, uh, you know, despite the fact that they are not participants today, coming out of this pandemic and, uh, you know, with the emergence of digital technology, CBDCs, they are definitely going to be participants in the economy, in the global economy, in the coming years. Now, let me remind you, these are not necessarily people who don't have any money. These are people who do have money, but they just don't have bank accounts. So, for example, a fisherman might wake up in the morning with no money. He'll go out, he'll go fishing, he'll catch some fish, he'll sell the fish to the local market, uh, that merchant will give him some money for the fish, he'll take that money, he'll buy some groceries, he'll go feed his family at the end of the day, he goes to bed with little to no money, and he does it all over again. And so these are segments of the population that, um, you know, that's just one example, and maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but, uh, you know, that is an example of somebody who would be considered an unbanked person working for the day, and, uh, you know, there are so many people across the globe that are like that, and, uh, you know, with RippleNet technology, a lot of these companies are looking to serve those types of populations. And uh, it's interesting to see that Ripple is definitely at the forefront of that. Going to be able to help a huge segment of the unbanked or underbanked population. Not only that, guys, RealXRP Boy here on Twitter posted this, okay, from the OECD. Now, for those of you guys who do not know what that is, they are the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and they're an intergovernmental economic organization with 38 member countries founded in 1961 to stimulate economic progress and world trade, okay? So founded in 1961, headquartered in France, and what do they focus on as well? Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And just over here, what is their main purpose? What is the role of the OECD? The main purpose of the OECD is to improve the global economy and promote world trade. It provides an outlet for governments of different countries to work together to find solutions to common problems. So another uh, look on uh, the globalized economy, how countries can work together to uh, benefit the economy together. And check this out, guys. Mentioned here from OECD.org. XR. RP, the native currency of Ripple, and here's what they said about it. It remains one of the most attractive digital currencies among traditional financial institutions looking for ways to revolutionize cross-border payments. It is getting support from a number of big players in the financial services industry, such as Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and Santander. Ripple is being accepted as a means of payment by a growing number of online merchants. So this document is not brand new. This is from 2018, but, but just to remind you guys where this trend is going today with these current articles and contextualizing it, banking the unbanked and the cooperation of global finance, how this is all going to be interconnected. We're seeing it in Africa with this RippleWorks initiative and Cellulance operations currently expanding by 50%. Guys, that is huge, serving 33 countries in Africa. We also had this Bank of America-led report. Bank of America, of course, a Ripple partner. Understanding these needs and uh, perhaps possibly pushing an agenda a little bit, integrating with RippleNet to be able to serve unbanked communities. And, uh, you know, just as a reminder, the OECD has indeed stated that Ripple and XRP could revolutionize cross-border payments. Although this was from a few years ago, we are now closer than ever before. So I think I'm gonna end it there, guys. Gotta keep this video brief. But tell me down in the comments what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.